The Mountain West getting six teams in the NCAA tournament was not a fluke because it started uh, the year previous. And I, I firmly believe that San Diego State getting to the championship game uh, in the NCAA tournament the year prior opened the eyes of a lot of people across the country. That was the first step. The second step, in my opinion, were coaches across the Mountain West scheduling up for the season, non-conference opponents. That was a real point of emphasis and, uh, you know, from the commissioner's office and the coaches really responded. So to start the season, you had four teams that came into the Mountain West conference play with just one loss. And San Diego State wasn't one of them. They were 11 and two. And there were big wins, right? Um, Boise State beating St. Mary's. On the road, beating Gonzaga with San Diego State. Uh, Colorado State smoking a top 10 uh, Creighton team. That really started the ball rolling. So by the time the conference schedule started, there were decidedly six really good teams with great resumes. And for the entire season, it seemed like every time those six teams played each other, it was a huge game and it was a close game. And, and that kind of started the ball rolling. And in January and February, every place I went uh, to do a game, it was a big game. And all of a sudden the secret got out nationally because you had national writers coming to Mountain West arenas. You had analysts in, for CBS or ESPN who hadn't really been West to do games that ended up in a Mountain West arena. And all you heard was, my God, how great is this? I mean, just reading people's uh, articles about, I had never been to the pit. I had no idea Viejas Arena was this tough. The spectrum, Utah State has a huge home court advantage. And of course, those of us that have been in the league and have been calling games for years, we knew that. We knew that the Mountain West arenas and home court advantages were much greater than the dearly departed Pac-12 or the West Coast Conference. We knew that. And so for January, February, and into March, these games were happening in front of sellout crowds, wild arenas. And those games really resonated with the national audiences. And certainly you, you would expect um, the committee, the NCAA tournament committee is watching these games as well. Uh, and so when it came down to, to selection time, you had teams that, that had been on national television. People had seen Colorado State. They had seen San Diego State certainly the year before. But all of a sudden, Boise State was on people's radar. All of a sudden, New Mexico was on everybody's uh, radar. And, you know, it, it was no fluke. Uh, you had six teams that deserved it. Those of us that have been in the league knew that it was not a fluke, that this is the Mountain West. Th these are really good teams and great home court environments. And then one of the things we saw in the Mountain West is when one of these six teams played each other in a conference play, uh, whether it was San Diego State going on the road at, at Utah State um, or Colorado State in the pit against New Mexico. Everybody in college basketball now, the morning after a game, opens up their phone or their laptop and pulls up the net rankings. Many times when one of these six teams would play the other, if you lost that game, you would look at the net the next day and expect that team to drop. There were instances where that team actually rose in the net. And if you did take a loss to one of these other five teams, if you were one of the six, you didn't drop very much in the net. And that's because of the body of work, the non-conference uh, wins, um, all of the big wins throughout non-conference, and these teams staying competitive. That's every commissioner's dream, is to have a, team, have a conference whose teams are so highly rated, the Big 12 had this, that when one team beats the other, the other team doesn't drop. Uh, and I think the proof was in Selection Sunday when six teams uh, from the Mountain West got to the dance.